Good morning and welcome to Hope for the Family with Evangelist Moyo and Sonia Eden. God is good all the time. We thank God for keeping us alive to see this day which He has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. The shouts of victory and rejoicing are heard all the time in the tent of the righteous. This morning we are walking up to our victory and rejoicing sounds. And as we walk in the presence of our God today, let us thank Him for everything He has done for us. Let us rejoice and know that God has kept us alive to see this day for a good purpose. As we go about our businesses today, we should remind ourselves always of the most important assignments that God has entrusted to our care in this world. God gave us the command to take the gospel of salvation to the nations. That should be our first and most important job in this world. The first thing that we should give our time to, our resources to, to ensure that this world goes out to the nations in Jesus' mighty name. If we are not doing the Lord's way, let us take a moment to reflect on what we are doing, what is taking our time, what is taking away our attention from God. Let us pray that the Spirit of God will reveal what we are doing wrong to us so that we can correct our sex and begin to do God's will in the name of Jesus. This morning we are glad to be alive. We come before God with all confidence to call him our God, with our Father, because he's our Father. He has taken care of us, he has provided everything that we need today. While we are asleep, he provided our food. We are not waking up this morning to eat the bread of sorrows. He is our God. He has anointed our heads this morning. He has refreshed our souls. Our God walked us beside still waters. Throughout today, let us believe that we will be refreshed, that no matter what happens to us today, that God will be right there with us to help us in the name of Jesus. Let us believe that our heads have actually been anointed that God has anointed our heads with oil, and that this day we are able to serve God, enjoy fellowship with Him, and go out and present Him before the world in the name of Jesus. We are channels of God's peace. Wherever we go, let us take the peace of God with us. Let us show people around us the love of God. God has shown us love. He loves us so very much, and He said that nothing can separate us from His love. While we are yet sinners, God died for us. That's the kind of love. God sent His Son to die for us. We know that Jesus Christ is God in the Son. God that came to us in the flesh as the Son. So Jesus Christ sent His Son. Our Lord and Savior Jesus, uh, God sent His Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to die for us. So let us thank God for everything He has given us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's not because of anything that we did. We did not give Him the uh, salvation in the first place, but God is there to give it to us. It is the grace of God that we are enjoying this day in the name of Jesus. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, I'm going to read my faith that not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves. But our competence comes from God. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. God gives us everything. He has called us his children. He calls us a royal priesthood. And he said that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can do all things God has given us every ability to achieve great success in this world, to be competent. Not because of anything that we did, but God Himself has made us competent through our God Jesus Christ. We are able to do great things for our God. Let us believe who we are, the testimony of God concerning Himself, concerning Himself and His testimony concerning us in the mighty name of Jesus. We know my sleep the fog this morning. God is with us and is going to help us in Jesus' mighty name. I know it's very early in the day, 12.40 a.m. But God is right here with us. He's going to enable us to do what we are going to do right now. As we begin our Bible study session, uh, we invite the Spirit of God to take control of everything we are going to do today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We are going to look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God who works in you. To will and to act in order to fulfill this good purpose. 
voice is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill its good purpose. So everything we do is God that's enabling us through His Spirit that dwells in us. The Spirit of God that works through us to accomplish the will of God is not anything that we give ourselves. We are not competent on, of our own, but God Himself makes us competent because we have the Spirit of God dwelling within us. And that spirit is enabling us to do the things that we do today. When we feel tired and weak in ourselves, we know that the grace of God has been for us in every situation, that, and that in our weaknesses, that the strength is made perfect in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So today we come believing that God is able to help us. We do not doubt what we have in God. He is our God. He will help us in the name of Jesus. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 10 says, that is why we labor and, and strive, because we have our hope in the living God, who is, who is the Savior of all, and especially of those who believe. And that is why we labor and strive, because we have our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all, and especially of those who believe. That's why we labor, labor and that's why we strive, because we know we have a God that will not kill us. That our hope is in the living God that will never fail us. Our expectation to see the goodness of God in the land of the living will not be cut short. Our God is good. What he said he will do in our lives, he will do it. We must believe and bring the promises of God that is contained in the Holy Bible in the name of Jesus. Because God has spoken a word over us, that word will not return to him void. And he has said so many good things about us, about our situation, and what he has already given us in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do we believe? Are we holding on to the promises or do we doubt God? Are we still looking around, running from one end to the other, looking for help, whereas help is already inside of us? Through the Spirit of God that lives in us, the Spirit that can help us to achieve the will of God in this world. Let us turn back from running around and let us concentrate on what God has done for us. Looking out to Jesus who has gone ahead of us and believing that we are competent in our God in the name of Jesus. That whatever the challenge is that we may be facing today, that with God we have over, already overcome in Jesus' name. We have the peace of God in us. We will try to give us peace. But not as the world has given, but He has given to us. That we should not be bothered about everything. We believe that God can do great and mighty things to us. He is our God. He teaches us to make a way. What is this? What is that situation that you are passing through today? Take it to God and believe that He can help you. Lay it at the feet of Jesus Christ. Trust God, have faith, believe, and claim the promises of God. Wait patiently and see the hands of God at work in your life in Jesus' mighty name. At this stage of our spiritual work, we should be encouraged. Children of encouragement, people go out to encourage other people. We have sat in and out year after years after year in our congregations, in our churches, listening. So our pastors, teachers, ministers, prophets, different people coming to tell us about God, the gospel of salvation, she us over the years. It gets to a stage, she gets to a stage in our lives where we can confidently say, yes, our confidence is in God, that everything, the spiritual investment that we have received, what has been put into us, the seed that has been sown in us, truly, yes, the ages that we can now use it, go out and do the will of God in the name of Jesus. We cannot be big or big all of our lives. Spiritually, we must grow. If actually the world is working in us, transforming us to be more and more like God, we should be able to go out to testify about this to the goodness of God to the people around us and to tell them about what God has done for us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That's what all of us to try to attain, to labor, and to get to that place where we can stand boldly on the word of God. I say, yes, we trust God, we believe in this word that has been given to us, and we are ready to take part to the nation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Be encouraged. Know that God will help you, that our competence is not of ourselves. We are not competent, but our competence is in God, the Father, as we read from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. 
Halleluja. Bruder, I fuck them, comes from God, do not fear. God has a purpose for our lives. And if we shall cross it, we fulfill the purpose. We will stand firmly on the word of God without doubting that God who has called us is able to accomplish this will in our lives. Believe God. Hold on to the truth. Do not compromise with the evil in the world. Defend your purpose. For God cannot do everything with anyone that is double minded and unstable in his small ways. If you are unstable, if you are like the waves of the sea that is tossed here and there by wind, and no one can do anything with anyone that is unstable in Jesus' name, let us trust God and stand firm on the word he has given to us, believing that God can do great and mighty things in us. If we surrender our members to him to use as instruments of righteousness in the name of Jesus. We learned that in the past, before we became new creatures in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we used to surrender our members to the evil one to use for evil purposes. But now that we know God, we can no longer do that. We surrender our members to God to use as instruments of righteousness so that we will be blessed and the kingdom will be blessed and so that we can be mighty in the hands of our God. Good and the strongest of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to read uh, one or two verses of Psalm 37. Pay attention as I read it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do not fright because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and go to it. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your heart. Like the new, like the new day sun, the justice of your thoughts, like the new day sun. Be stay before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fear when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret; it leads only to evil. For evil men will be cut off. For those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Hallelujah. Amen. That we should not be afraid when evil men succeed in their plans. Because you know what will happen to them. By the grass, they will be cut off. They will wither and they will die. In the name of Jesus. God has promised us that we will commit our ways to, to the Lord. We trust in Him and He will do the, He will do this for us. He will make our righteousness shine like the dawn. Our righteousness will shine like the dawn. And the justice of our cause like the new day. Hallelujah. That's our God. We have to wait patiently for him. It's when you know we turn point to him. He has given us this promise that he's going to make our righteousness to shine like the dawn and the justice of our cause like the day, uh, new day sun. We believe it. We hold on to it. He has already done it for us through our God and Savior Jesus Christ. We have to trust God. And hold on to the world in Jesus' mighty name. Be encouraged this day. Do not be afraid of evil days. Do not be afraid of any evil reports you hear any year. Trust in God. Stand firmly on the word of God. Be prayer. Wait patiently. God is going to make your justice to shine like the dawn. And the, the, your right God is going to make your righteousness to shine like the dawn. And the justice of your cross like the new day sun. Your righteousness will shine like the dawn, and the justice of your cause by the new day sun in the name of Jesus. We trust God. His eyes go to his eyes go to and fro the universe, looking at everything that we are doing. Do you think that God, who created us, we are not able to prevail? No, he is our God. So let us not be afraid when evil men succeed in their evil plan, because they will be destroyed by their own evil deeds. In Jesus' mighty name, and God will come in and we will see Him rewarding us for our patient 
that we will wait patiently for him, we will trust him that we will never fail us. We will not fail us in the name of Jesus. Let's trust God and be happy that we are the children of God, that evil will not prevail, that the plan of men will be many, or the counsel of God will prevail in the name of Jesus. That's the God we have in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Be encouraged and be a child of encouragement to somebody today in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to sing the hymn I sang yesterday in my segment, in my session yesterday. And the title is, Thy Life Was Given for Me. It is taken from, this hymn was, it was recast in 1871 in church hymns under the title, Thy Life Was Given for Me. The original hymn was written by Frances Havigel, having girls, and it is because I first him, but it was rewritten. I'm reading, I'm reading the, I'm going to sing the one that was re rewritten in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thy life was given for me. Thy blood, O oh Lord, was shed, that I might ransom thee, and free him from the dead. Thy life was given for me, what have I given for thee? Thy life was given for me, what have I given for thee? Long years we have spent for me in weariness and woe. That through eternity thy glory I might know. Long years we have spent for me, I have spent one. For thee. Long years we have spent for me. I have spent one for thee. And I has brought to me down for thy own have salvation full and free. Thy pardon and thy love. Great gifts that protest me. What I have brought to thee. Great gifts that protest me. What I have brought to thee. Oh, let my life be given. My yes for thee be spent. What feet has all be ridden and joy with suffering blame? That gave us thy self for me, I give myself to thee. That gave us thy self for me. I give myself to thee. Amen. For the Lord has given himself to us. What we can give back to him in appreciation for everything he has done for us is to give ourselves back to him. He came down from heaven, from his home at all. To die for us. It was made a sin for us, a sin of the for us. We did not do anything wrong. But God made it a sin of the threat for us so that we can be reconciled by God. In Him was fulfilled all the requirements of the law so that we can have a relationship with God. What can we give back to Him? We just claim that our competency are not confident in ourselves, but our confidence in, in God, God who has called us. So let us come the way we are to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come to God in our sins and 
So if you are sex trained, Jesus, in Jesus mighty name, let's give up give back our lives, everything we have for our God to use in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time we are going now to continue with our, the reading of our passage where we stopped yes, uh, two days ago from the book of Romans chapter 9 and we will start reading from verse 16 and that will take us to the end of the book of Romans chapter 9. We pray that the Spirit of God will enlighten us and help us to read this morning in the name of Jesus. Let's say a word of prayer for maybe it's also the time for God. We need the Spirit of God to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we give you thanks. We bless you for being our God. We thank you for everything you have done for us. We have come before you again today to call you our Father, without our Father. We need wisdom, Father Lord. We lack wisdom. We say if anyone lacks wisdom, they should ask of you. That the true word of God is not holding back. Jehovah God, flood us with wisdom this day in the name of Jesus. Flood us with knowledge, with revelation, and everything we need in our God as we go now into our Bible study session. Our Lord and God Almighty, we know that we have sinned against you so many ways. We are falling short of the glory. For your word says that if anyone says that we are not lying, we have not we have not seen that we are liars. Jehovah God, we have sinned. We ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Father, as you have forgiven us, we pray that you help us to forgive everyone who has sinned against us in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, be a right here. Come in, in the name of help us, teach us, instruct us, call us in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for everything you have done for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. If God has been good to you, to the people around you. We feel with joy and thanksgiving for what God has done for you, what you know God has done for you, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to read Romans chapter 9, verse, beginning from verse 16 to the end. It does not, it does not therefore depend on man's desire or effort, but on God's, on God's mercy. For scripture says to Pharaoh, for the scripture says to Pharaoh, I raise you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, mercy and in parents whom he wants to parent, who he wants to pardon. One of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us? For who resists its will? But who are you, O oh man, to talk back to God? Shall, shall what is formed say to him who formed it, Why do you make me like this? Does not the person have the right to make one of the same lot of clay some, pot, some pottery for noble purpose, purposes and some for Common use. What if God choosing to show his wrath and make its power known, bore with great patience the objects of its wrath, prepared for destruction? Prepared for destruction? What if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of its mercy, whom he prepared in advance for glory? Even us, who he also called not only from the Jews but also from the Gentiles, as it says in Hosea. I will call them my people who are not my people, and I will call her my loved one who is not my loved one. And it will happen that in the very place where it was said to them, You are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. Amen. Isaiah cries out concerning Israel. Though the number of the Israelites be like the sand by the sea, only the remnants will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence on earth with speed and finality. It is just as Isaiah said previously, unless the Lord Almighty has left us descendants, we would have become like Sodom and, and we would have been like Gomorrah. 
distress unbelief. What then shall we say? That the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it a righteousness that is by faith. But Israel, who pursued the law of righteousness, has not attained it. Why not? Because they pursued it not by faith, but as it were by works. They stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written. See, I lay in Zion, a stone that, that causes them to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Hallelujah. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in us at this day. I mean, this word produces the fruit of righteousness in each one of us. That will take out something that we can apply in our lives, something that we can use to bless and encourage people around us. To show them the truth, to let them know what God has done for us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. At this time, we commit everything to the Spirit of God to be the Spirit of us to help us to come out with something from this passage in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to go back and we read and it's going to echo to explain in Jesus' name. Amen. It does not, therefore, depend on man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For the Scripture says to Pharaoh, I raise you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Our argument, what we are reading from yesterday, says is that God has every right to show, show mercy on whosoever he wants to show mercy on, and compassion on whosoever he wants to show compassion on. That even we human beings, we have that right to exercise uh, the power, uh, our privilege, to show mercy to or to elect anyone we want to. That God also did that. We were from the image of God. So why do we want to have this God that we think uh, that God of favoritism? We can do that because God has a right to exercise his power, his privilege to choose whosoever he wants to show that, whosoever he wants to show mercy to in the name of Jesus. So I think that we are reading that it does not depend on a man's desire or effort, what he desire, what he wants God to do. It doesn't de depend on that. It doesn't depend on our effort. It doesn't depend on our good works. But everything depends on God's mercy. Our relationship with God, what we receive from God, the blessings, the favor, whatever God does for us, depends on God's mercy. And we, we rest a little bit or a lot on the principle of election yesterday. That it is God's predestination to eternal life. Children take it. That these are the ones that are mine. The one my sheep hear my voice and they will listen to me. They will come to me. That God has chosen for he forgave some people for salvation according to his own will. And none of us can question God about that. None of us can question the wisdom of God is the way we want it to be, and that's the way it is. We have that same right to exercise our freedom to do the things that we want to do. God gives us freedom to make choices every day in this world. The same way with God. He chose Jacob, he did not uh, choose Israel. The, the promise came through Isaac, and from Isaac to it was extended to all of us. The people of Israel had the law, but they were trying to do good works. They did not receive that righteousness that. That, that, that God has given to us righteousness and righteousness that we can only end by faith. But because we are trying to be righteous through their own good work, through their own effort, they were not chosen. Those who were trying to do that, they rejected God's grace. The, the plan that God God the plan that man will come through God, man, man will come through about Jesus Christ because we consider to him Jesus Christ through grace and that we will receive it by faith, have faith in God. But because they rejected it, what have the salvation came to us? God God's salvation to Gentiles in the name of Jesus. Even among the children of Israel, there are people who receive it. That's the power of God, the mercy of God. It begins the hearts of men to receive this word. It goes out with power. Those that are at peace, those that humble themselves before him and receive it, he embraces them and he welcomes them into his kingdom. It's God that shows mercy to you. It's not your effort. Not to anything that we ever do in this world in the mighty name of Jesus. We have to accept it that this is the kind of righteousness that we have to faith. Righteousness that comes through faith. 
grace, the grace of God that has been given to men, that there's nothing that any of us can do that can give us salvation except we accept what God has already done for us through our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the scripture referred to Pharaoh, that God raised him up for a purpose. Pharaoh was disobedient to the will of God. He tried to obstruct the will of God so many times. The different pharaohs we read, read, we read about right from the Old Testament, they saw themselves as supreme, as kings. They, they did not care about the, the word, about the word of God. They, they did not care about the instruction. They were just doing their own thing. And we saw as God dealt with them, that God raised them up to, for him to bring them down in the name of Jesus. Can we question God for doing that? No. We saw a disobedient pharaohs. So whatever God gave to him as a punishment, whatever experience they went through in the hands of God, for God to bring them to humble them, them to bring them down, we knew that God was just in what he did. Because this truth against the will of God. Even when God said that his children should leave, that they should let his children go. The Torah at the time of Moses did not want that to happen. He was having against the will of God. He was not listening to what God was saying through his servants. Uh, Moses and God said to him because he deserved to be dead in that way. The Pharaoh, in the time of uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we saw what God did to him. So I went about killing uh, the, the newborn children because he was trying to obstruct the will of God to stop what God had planned that will happen, that salvation was coming through the Messiah. He was trying to stop it, but we saw what God did to him. And God brought him down in the mighty name of Jesus. That Pharaoh is in error. In the New Testament, they are still kings who think that they are in position to obstruct the will of God. Some too said that why are the nations raging uh, against God? Why do the kings come together, the kings of the earth, to try to stop the plans, the purpose of God? But that God, who sees everything, that God had them in derision, God saw them, saw what they were doing, and he knew that they were not going to succeed in any way in the name of Jesus. That's what God does. He will raise one up, he will bring well, give another down to so that his perfect will concerning us will be made manifest. We'll see that we know that it's the power of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I raise you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Hallelujah. That I raise you up, you this king, Pharaoh, for a purpose. So that I will display my power in you. In your disobedience, my power will be, will be profound. People will see my power in you. I will display my power and I will bring you down so that the entire world will help will proclaim my name. They will know that I am God. God who will never change. God that no king, nobody can stand against in the mighty name of Jesus. That though your plans are many to obstruct what I have uh, planned for my children, but my counsel as God will stand firm in the mighty name of Jesus. That's what I do. I show mercy to whosoever I want to show mercy to. And I show compassion to who I want to show compassion to. I bring anyone that stands against my will. I bring them down. Bring them down to where they are. No one can stand against me. That's God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy. And in hardens whom he wants to pardon. Hallelujah. Amen. In hardens several Pharaoh's heart. And that led to his destruction in the mighty name of Jesus. One of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us? For who, who, for who resists its way? But who are you, O oh man, to talk back to God? That some of us want to argue that. So why does God blame us? If God is the one that shows mercy to whoever he wants to show mercy to, and shows compassion to whoever he wants to show, uh, show compassion to, and that if God was behind Pharaoh's disobedience, that God had in his heart, then why would God blame us when things happen? When when He called knew us, He called those He wants He wants to call. He justified those He wants to justify. That He did everything according to His own uh, plan. So why should God blame us? But then we are rebuking it that who are you to even think that way about God? Who are you to ask God any question? The question is wisdom. God is God, and whatever He does, He does. We just have to accept it. In everything, we may not even understand it, but we know that everything works for good according to for them that God has called, according to the will of God, that our God is righteous. So when God does anything, there's no evil in it in the name of Jesus. 
he had seen in us, there's a spirit in man that is compared to the word of God. Which of course we have our own spirit. God knows what is in there. So when God does whatever he does, let us lift up our hands and say, Father, we are just. Thank you, God, for what you have done in the mighty name of Jesus. We cannot question God. We are not in that position to question God. We don't we make you sit in that way. He is our God. We accept whatever He has done, whatever He will do, and we offer ourselves before Him in the name of Jesus. Amen. For who resists is free. But who are you, O oh man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to Him who formed it? Why did you make me like this? You have no choice. I, I cannot turn back to my to God or to my parents to say, why am I like this? Why did you why did you bring me to this world? Why every it has it's already done. There's nothing we can do about it. We cannot somebody that is formed cannot go back to the person that formed it and say, Why did you make it like this? You've been made. That's the way it is. That's the way you are. That's the way you have to accept it. In the name of Jesus. We can't turn it again. We cannot turn it around. We just have to live the way we are. That's how it is in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is formed, say to him, who formed it? Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make what? Of the same lock of clay, some pottery, pottery for noble purpose and some for common use. The potter has the right from the same lock of clay. He, he makes some for noble use, some pottery for noble use, and some pottery for noble use, and some for common use. From the same law. That's how it is. And that's exactly what God has done. Some have a noble use and some have a common use. God has chosen who he wants to choose. There's nothing we can do about it. It's according to his will. And his name be blessed forever in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. What did God choosing to show Israel and make its power known? Born with great, great patience. The objects of its wrath to prepare for destruction. That what he called, because he has chosen to show its wrath and make its purpose known. Bore with great patience the object of its wrath to prepare for destruction. That when the object of God's wrath is doing things disobedient, is being disobedient to God, what if God allows that disobedience to continue? Because God wants to show his purpose. He wants to show that he is God. He has, number one, in the first place, we believe that God has already made its will known to that person that turn around for your evil day, but he did not care. Then God just makes that, that object of the wrath to continue in the evil way until the cup is full, the measure of evil and wickedness is full. Then God comes in to, to punish. The, the wicked person for their evil deeds. That can we question God if God allows it to be that way? Like when Pharaoh refused to allow the, the children of Israel to go, despite all the warning, the different times Moses went and Aaron went before him, he, he refused and everything. And God has allowed it to go on. Go on. That's why the different plates and everything. We saw the patience of God. Can we question God that why do you allow it to prolong, to drag that long before you did something? No one can question God. That's the way God wants it to be. When we see now we are, we are going astray, we are doing everything we are doing. God sees us. He's allowing us. He's giving us time to reflect on what we are doing, to turn back from our evil ways to come back to, to Him. For us to think about the things we are doing. But if we do not change, then whatever comes out from our evil ways, then we cannot question God. We accept that yes, this is a just reward for our evil. We know that we should not call him that God is smart about his promises. That the fact that Jesus Christ has not come again to judge the living and the dead has not come at this time. To judge the living and the dead does not mean that the word of God is void. It will never return to him. That God is giving us time to turn away from our evil way, to turn back to him, to repent from our sins in Jesus' mighty name. So that when God comes to judge, no one can say, Oh, Father God, you will not judge in righteousness. None of us can stand before God to say that. Because God is giving us enough time to make up our minds about what we want to do in this world in Jesus' mighty name. Does not, that's verse 22 now. What if God Choosing to show Israel and make and make its power known. While with great patience, the object of Israel prepared for destruction, that God wants to make his purpose known, its power known, in the object of his world, that the world with great patience, the object of the world, knowing that at the end it's going to be destruction, that it's going to destroy that person with great patience, observing and seeing 
all the easy things, but the wicked one is doing. Can we question God for having that patience, allowing that wickedness to continue, to continue, to continue? Please, God, whatever He wants, He will do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What if He did this to make the riches of His glory known to the object of His mercy, who He prepared in advance for glory, for glory, even us who who He also called not only from the Jews but also from the Gentiles? That what if God did this for Him to show us that He has called? We are the object of His glory, of His mercy, to show us that He is righteous, that He is merciful. That is patient. So that when we receive the, the reward for our obedience, we know that yes, that whatever we do was according to the will of God, that God showed us mess. Can we question God? No. But that what if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the object of his mess? What if God did this to make the riches of his glory known to the object of his mess? That my patience, my long suffering, my love. Everything I did for you, giving you Jesus Christ, calling you back, for, for knowing you, preordaining that you are going to be the object of my mess, that you are going to be mine and I've chosen you. Can we question God for exercising that right, that authority for, for choosing those that he wants to show mercy? No, it's God. And to him be the glory alone in the mighty name of Jesus. Even us, who he also called. Not only from the Jews, but also from the Gentiles. That those of us that he called, both from the Jews and from the Gentiles. Now we question God, or we have to we receive and thank God, believing that God has actually called that is our God. And be grateful that we receive the mercy of God. And just accept it the way it is, according to his will, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As he says in Hosea, I will call them my people who are not my people. And I will call her my loved one, who is not my loved one. And, and, and it will happen that in the very place where it was said to them, you are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. That is already, it was already said in the, the prophet Isaiah that God is going to call the people that were not his people, his people. The ones that were not his, his loved ones, his loved ones. That it happened that in that very place where they were, where they were told, that they are not the people of God, that they will be called the children of the living God. It's God Himself that will do it. When the people of Israel who had the law, who had the temple worship, who had everything rejected salvation, God showed mercy to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles who were not God people became God people. We were not loved by God, became loved by God. God Himself said, in that very place where we are rejected in the past, yet they will know that we have become the children of the living God. God Himself. Done that. Can we question God for showing mercy to us? There's a spirit in us that is in agreement with God. The spirit that agrees with the spirit of God that truly we are the children of God. God Himself gave us that righteousness. He gave us that spirit within us. He gave us the heart with which we can surrender to Him entirely and say our sins and sinners and say, Father Lord, have mercy on us. Where we realize that all along that we have been straying from the righteous part, that everything we have done has not brought any good to ourselves, but reproach. That as the light, the word of God shone in our darkness and showed us our evil parts, that we are able to, we are able to come to God in faith, believing that every testimony of God concerning Himself, that yes, that really, that the testimony was true, was the truth, or is the truth, and we receive salvation from God in the name of Jesus, because we have faith. But those who the world was, who was went to in the first place did not have that faith. They wanted to do good works, and they believed that by obeying the law through their own efforts that they could get salvation. But it doesn't work with God that way. We cannot get salvation through our good works. We must humble ourselves before God and accept what God has done for us through our Lord Jesus Christ. That it is true faith. Righteousness in Jesus Christ comes through faith in the name of Jesus. God has given us grace. Can we question God? That it is this way. We cannot. We just have to accept what God has done for us and thank Him for being our God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Though the number of the Israelites be like the sand by the sea, only the remnants will be saved. For the Lord will carry out His sentence on earth with speed and finality. That the prophet Isaiah, that verse 20, 
7 that the prophet Isaiah Christ has concerning Israel. That though the number of the Israelites be like the sand by the sea, only the remnants will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence on earth with speed and finality. That though the, the remnant of the Israelites will, will be like as the sea of, of or the sun upon the seashore, that it's only the remnants that will be saved. God has said it, and the prophet Isaiah said it long ago. Can we question God? It's according to his view. He knows the spirit that is in the man. He knows the, the acts that we, that we listen to him, the words that we come to him. He has so many seeds of faith on every, in every word. But not everybody is accepting what God has done. And we cannot question God. It's according to his will. We cannot understand the depth of his wisdom. But we surrender our sins and say, Father, but let your will be done in the name of Jesus. We cannot question him in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It is just as Isaiah said previously, unless the Lord Almighty had left us descendants, we would have become like Sodom, we would have been like Gomorrah, that except God left us descendants, that the people of Israel, the people of Israel would have been like Sodom or Gomorrah, they would have totally been wiped out because of their sins, but God showed mercy to them, and God is merciful. He will show mercy to whosoever he will show mercy to, he will show compassion on whosoever he will show compassion to. Despite the fact that they turned against God, they did everything, God still showed mercy to them. They were not wiped out entirely like Sodom and Gomorrah. Let us thank God that God has shown us mercy in this time. We that we are Gentiles, that we are not all the children of God. It is through the will of God. It's God that did it himself, not by anything that we did, not through our works, or our good works, or our own effort. But God himself showed us mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. His rest on the day. What then shall we say? That the Gentiles, who, who, that the Gentiles, who did not Pursue righteousness have obtained it, a righteousness that is by faith. That the Gentiles who do not push, who do not pursue righteousness right from the beginning have obtained it, a righteousness that is by faith. God is said did it. In the Gentiles that did not know God, who do not pursue righteousness, they had in their heart there was something in them that needed to God, to this word, to the truth, and they believed it. There was something that made God to send this word to them because He knew that. There are people there, there are souls which he created, which he has preordained that they will be saved, that he will show them mercy, he will show them compassion, that his love will, be, will, be, will spread abroad to the nations because he is our God in the name of Jesus. Let's bless God for what God has done for us, that we are his spirit. We believe every word spoken about us in the world. We are accepted in faith, and God has made us righteous in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But Israel. Who pursued a law of righteousness, but not who pursued a law of righteousness has not attained it. That Israel who pursued a law of righteousness, who had the law, who had the temple worship, who were the ancestors of the one true uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came, who had the promise, who had everything. What happened? That they pursued a kind of righteousness. Because of that, they did not attain righteousness to God because they were trying to do it through their own works. In the mighty name of Jesus, which God said that you cannot be right to do it through your works. It is by faith. It is grace. I've given it to you. You do not merit it. You do not merit it in any way. I see your struggle. I saw your pains and everything. You could not become righteous through your own effort. I gave you freely. Not because you deserve it, but because I'm your God. Because of my righteousness sake. I've shown you mess. I've shown you love. But yet you are pursuing it through faith, through your hard work. You cannot become righteous. You must be by faith in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. But Israel, who pursued a law of righteousness, has not attained it. Why not? Because they pursued it not by faith, but as it were, by works. They did not attain it because they pursued it not by faith, but as it were, by, by works. They stumbled over the stumbling stone because they were pursuing it by, pursuing it by, work, by works. They they stumble over the stumbling stone. As it is written, See, I lay in Zion a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who trusts in me will never be put to shame. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. That see, that God has laid in Zion a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who trusts in that stone, in whom our Lord and Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ will never be put to shame in Jesus' mighty name. What are we holding on to? Are we trying to attain righteousness by works? 
or do we believe that God has given us righteousness that we can only earn by faith? If we have faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we believe what God has done for us, we will receive the mercy of God, we will receive compassion from God. God has given, already given us salvation. Are we excluding ourselves from the plan of God, thinking that we can do it by our own efforts? We are just afraid that can we question God if He allows the wicked to continue their evil deeds so that the cup of evil will be full, so that the wrath against them from God will be full, that when God judges, no man can, can, can question God. We know that the end of the evil one is destruction. What can we say about it? it? It's God. It's God. The evil one has refused to listen to God. So whatever comes from their evil days is the consequence of their own actions, of their own evil days. So they cannot question God. They accept it. But God is, did that so that we can see his mercy. Those of us that have received his mercy. So that we know that our God is just. Our God is loving. He is God. Because we are obedient to him, he's not, he's not a partial God. He uses the same standard for everyone. The word has gone out. So are we ready to receive salvation or we just want to do it our own way? We saw that Pharaoh was raised up for a reason, for a purpose, so that God's righteous, righteous judgment will be made manifest amongst men. God brought him that he was disobedient to God. Are we testing God? None of us can say, okay, if God is the one, that just fight. If God is the one that shows mercy, if God is the one that shows compassion, then why should God blame us when we do things wrong? They ask we are not even part of God's plan in the first place. It's that none of us can make that argument. We believe that God created us all and that if He's calling on us even right now, to turn back from our evil ways to come back to Him. God will not turn His back against us. But we have to look within us to see if there's anything in us that not right within us. Something that is standing against the will of God. That disobedient spirit that does not want to trust God, believe God, or even have any consciousness of God. We just pray that God will take it away from us so that when we come before God, we humble ourselves before God and pray that God will have towards mercy. That God will forgive us for all the things that we have done against His will. In Jesus' mighty name, our God is able to help us. We need the mercy of God. Without it, we can't survive in this world, we can't do anything. Everything we have comes from God. It's our God, He loves us. Jesus Christ died for us all. We are all sinners when He died. God has given us salvation. Do we want to accept it? Do we have faith to believe what God has done and for us to claim it? In Jesus' mighty name, the choice is for us to make. God has given each of us a free will. He's not going to trust us. We have to think about it, what we want. We have all rights to exercise this free will in the name of Jesus. Just as God has a right to exercise uh, his um, power and authority, his privilege in electing us in election, in for ordaining those that he wants in the name of Jesus. So let us thank God and just surrender to him and say, Father, have your will, you are our God, in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we are going to pray. Father Lord, we just thank you. We bless you for being our God. We thank you for bringing us to the end of this Bible study session. We know that, Father Lord, that righteousness is earned by faith and not by hard works, not by our own works. We thank you, God, because you have given us salvation. We cannot question you. You created us, O Lord God, and each of us created for a purpose. May your will be done on earth here as it is in heaven. We know, Father Lord, that you love us all, that we will turn from our evil ways and come to you, that you will not send us away. Jehovah God, we pray, help us in our own belief. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pray that your will be done in our lives. Receive the grace, Lord. We receive the glory, O Lord God. We thank you, God, for we know that in everything, that your grace will appear for us in every situation we pass through in this world. May your will be done in our lives here on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, God, for answer prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If God has been good to you, testify about the goodness of God to the people around you. Remember that God is counting on us to bring this word to the nations. The gospel has been entrusted to us. We saw the, uh, what the apostles did with it. They took it, they were, they were serious, they were faithful, they went out to the nations. Despite the fact that they passed through persecution, they did not give up. Some of them died, 
for the world still going to come. And that's why we have received salvation today. We receive the word. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Let us remember as go out that we are channels of God's peace in the world. Let us show the people around us the love of God and always know that in everything we do, that our deeds should give God glory in the name of Jesus. That the world around us will see our good deeds and glorify our God and Father in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Be blessed this day. God loves you. We love you.